I think this is gonna be a good one. It's been over three weeks since the last news video and we have a lot of important stuff to talk about. So it might just turn into a Hall of Fame badge plug yapathon that you guys love so much. I don't know, 30, 40 minutes, we will see. But hey, drop a like if you guys support one of the only 2K creators that hasn't sold their soul to 2K. And let's get into this because we have a lot to talk about and yap about as well. First of all, as you guys see right here, I wanna thank you, man. Three million views on the Kobe video in under three months, the no money spent Kobe video, my tribute to him. And we also showed three million people already, almost my most popular video already on my entire channel that you don't have to spend money on BC or you could spend a lot less, you know, get up to like 70, 80 overall and then do it no money spent if you want as well. But yes, thank you guys so much because the average view duration is over an hour. You might not know about YouTube analytics, but that is crazy that three million people clicked on a video and on average watch for at least an hour so anyway i also want to thank you because my next big project besides the kobe video was this one right here the downfall of nba 2k and it's already going crazy of course thanks to you guys this would not be happening without you man it took forever like we started this in january me and the guy that was editing the video, writing the script and things like that. This wasn't no normal news video if you've seen it, right? So we really sat there and I researched for three to four days, had a whole thing written up, scrapped it. Boom, we made the Kobe video, we came back to it. It took hours and hours of talking before we even found out exactly how we wanted to word things and how we felt. And a lot of people agreed. It was honestly amazing to see so many people. I'm not gonna spoil it. You gotta go check it out. Besides the fact, that I uh, said Bethesda wrong, and I have been getting destroyed in the comments, okay? People are assuming I don't even play other games besides 2K, which is crazy. I'm not gonna just defend myself, because you guys know, my OGs know that I do play other games, especially if you were there for the Facebook days, you know what I'm saying? If you were there when I had that contract, where yes, they paid me beautifully to, to stream on Facebook, and I got to play a lot of games that I didn't normally have the time for. I thought I didn't love gaming anymore because all I played was 2K for like a three to four period of time, and I got to play a lot of awesome games again. Like I went back and beat Resident Evil 4, GTA, San Andreas, GTA, a5 we beat elden ring multiple times went on a 99 win streak in pvp before they even added the arenas i'm gonna stop yapping okay but thank you guys seriously and uh but uh, yeah i never did play bethesda by the way so sorry but uh anyway let's talk about what we really came here to talk about i mean we have a lot so it's not really like look they added 2k a pay to win this is the very beginning of everything this is the start of the downfall. We seen this last year when 2K added the season passes. We knew this was gonna be a very, very high chance that this was testing the waters, right? What they're doing is they're adding it to see how people feel about it, what they say. And yeah, people got upset and people made their rant videos, but then the statistics came out like we've seen in the last earnings, which I also wanna talk about as well. I don't think it is as good as they said it was, but anyway, people are buying it. It's very obvious that people are buying these whole, I don't know why. I, Dude, I literally have bought, even I, this is my job. I think I've bought one Hall of Fame pass and it was season one so I could get the short shorts because there was no short shorts. They did that on purpose, which is crazy by the way. There was no short shorts in the game in season one except for if you bought the pro pass or Hall of Fame pass, which is crazy. Uh, but yeah, that's insane. Anyway, look at this, bro. You see right here on the left, Mike Wang said before the game came out, a note about the pro slash Hall of Fame season passes for 2K24. There are some really cool prizes in the passes, but nothing that will provide my players a competitive advantage on the court. No gameplay animations, badges, etc. And then for level six, if you buy that pass, you now have a plus one three point arm sleeve, which I've also been told has been out in the game and earnable before in other seasons except and i could be wrong here i want you guys to you know correct me in the comment section down below because i don't play 2k a lot in this time of the year but the earnable one was for like the left arm and now they dropped one that you cannot get apparently without buying this season pass on the right arm which is the very beginning of pay to win i mean the game's already pay to win as it is i mean 2k has basically turned into pay to play right not even pay to win in the game that the game mode that i play my team is definitely uh you know pretty high up there in the pay to win but like 
you everybody basically spends money on their build and then they go into play there's a lot of people that you know there is a group of people that do no money spent and stuff like that now which i would love to see much more people doing now that a lot of other creators have got into it as well and posted their no money spent videos i mean that's millions and millions of people that have viewed this now so we'll see what they're gonna do but anyway back to what i'm saying is 2k is testing the waters they waited and waited next year the pro pass the hall of fame pass all that stuff will most likely have even more things like this you might be like oh it's just plus one three-point arm sleeve that's how they get you they want you to start out psychologically i'm not i'm not even kidding right now guys i'm not even joking they want you to go oh it's just like there's literally someone that commented or was thinking bro it's just plus one and then they're gonna slowly move in a little bit more slowly moving a little bit more until eventually you're gonna be at a disadvantage probably now i'm saying probably because we don't know the future exactly but you're gonna be at a disadvantage if you don't buy the season pass which is crazy because in my team they've already done something like this They've already done it in season seven where I seen that they gave you a Jokic card, right? That's like a power forward or a center. And if you buy the Hall of Fame pass for this season, you're gonna get a point guard Jokic, which I think also has better animations and things like that. Now, if you guys don't know about my team, basically, I mean, I don't know the exact meta nowadays, but for years now, it's been you want to have very tall players, even at point guard. Like, you want to have seven-foot point guards if you can with the best animations and best jump shots. So, yes, it is huge to be able to put Jokic at point guard, especially if he has good stats and things of that nature. This is the start, and it's not looking good. Now, one thing I've tried to tell you guys, because I want to have an audience that watches these videos that has a brain. Right, this is a news video. We're talking about news. There's most likely not very many like kids watching these videos. And if you are a kid, that's awesome that you're watching a video like this because we're not like, you know, TikTok edit edit edit, you know, making your brain go crazy, brain rot. You're actually listening to something, engaging in it and things like that. But what I'm trying to say is, I want you all to think about is 2K actually dead? In your head right now. Is it actually because it is top 10 and actually number three in the country, and I think this is on PlayStation this month. Now, I believe it was free last month. I'm not sure if it still is, but that's crazy. Regardless of what you wanna say, oh, maybe it's free or but whatever it is, there is people playing this game. We've seen in the last earnings that their earnings was good. However, their last earnings before that, which is once every three months, if you guys don't know, for the company of Take-Two, it was red. And then they made the game free on PlayStation and Xbox for a whole month. They also did whatever the hell they did with my team that we've talked about, which is horrible. I mean, they turned it into an actual gambling simulator is what people are saying. They People are calling it my casino. It's that bad. Every card that's actually good, apparently, you can only get from opening packs with money. Yeah, you can afford and grind out something to get like one pack, but the odds are less than 2%, it says. And most people that have went into it and actually did the math are saying it's actually less than 1%, usually around 0.2% is what DBG said. So there's people like Troy Dan who exposed that you can spend thousands of dollars to not even get the card that you want. Or he spent, I think it was like $6,000 until he got Michael Jordan. So anyway, what I'm trying to say is they did the game for free on both consoles and they also did whatever they did with my team. They turned it into an actual, what people are saying, gambling simulator. So they did all that to get a green earnings for to say, hey, we made money guys, don't worry. I think that if you take away that stuff right there, because they made a lot of people stop playing 2K. I mean, even Troy Dan said that he's not playing my team or uploading it anymore until they fix what's going on. These business practices that are so bad. I think that if they took that away, it wouldn't have been green. I think we would have seen two red ones in a row. Now, there's something I want to talk about with you guys. I'm always here to destroy the narratives that I do not feel are true. And I've seen a good amount of people, you know, like 10, 20 comments with this mindset right here. Check this out. So this is a comment and it says, now imagine if creators actually go by what they say and actually quit spending thousands and thousands of dollars, the game would actually be good. It's that easy peeps. To actually go out there and think of all the issues that 2K is in right now and point it at creators is horrible in my opinion. 
I think this is one of the worst narratives that has happened in the last few years. Yes, some creators are part of the issue, right? And some creators go to community day and promote the game. They bite their tongue all year. Yes, that is an issue. But if you can look and think of the number one issue and you're not going to say it's 2K, I can't respect your opinion. I can't, but check this out. Let's go even further. If you took out a calculator and you said, I'm just gonna give you a really crazy estimate right here, that there's 500 creators. I couldn't name more than, I don't know, 10 to 20 that still upload the game, you know what I'm saying? But let's say there's 500, because we're gonna count people that are just, you know, just now trying to make content. They have only been doing it for a year or two. They're not really out there yet, things like that. Let's say there's 500 creators. And let's say they spend, and I'm being generous here because it's probably less than this if you took all of them together, $2,000 during the whole year of 2K24. Do the math. You can check it if you want. That's a million dollars. Now, a million dollars, you might be like, wow, that's so much. And usually it is. But 2K makes over a billion dollars a year on just NBA 2K. Now, let's say, let's somehow say, because we're adding my team creators in here, kind of, you know, like Troy Dan, which is a big outlier. This is not something, some, like he's not the average creator. Let's say the average creator out of 500 spends 4,000, that's still only $2 million. That is a gigantic piece of the pie that is still not talked about. There is literally last year, 13 million people that bought NBA 2K23, guys. Yes, creators are a part of the issue, but they're not nearly as big as you actually think they are. Like, yes, we've talked about this before, that creators could go on strike about the game, but I've told y'all, man, and I, I, I said I would do it. But the issue here is that there's so many creators, especially bigger ones, that are locked up. They bite their tongue throughout the whole year, and it doesn't make sense to me, guys. It doesn't make sense, because I'm telling you right now, a lot of them make a good amount of money. They don't need 2K. They don't, it's a, it's literally a small piece of their earnings throughout the year that they get to go to community day and post some videos because you know August is a very dry month for most people's channels. So this is nice. It's a great opportunity for them. They get to get flown out, wined and dined by Ronnie 2K. But still, I can't imagine, and it actually breaks, not breaks my heart, but it, it just blows my mind that there's so many creators that bite their tongue throughout the whole year just so they can go to this one event and just so they can have a little logo that by the way means nothing anymore we all know the logo doesn't mean anything but yet here we are it's actually crazy to me but getting to my point if every single creator went on strike there would be some significance to that although there is a lot of people that do not watch youtubers or streamers they're just casual basketball fans which is fun there's nothing wrong with being a casual. We wouldn't have this game if there wasn't casuals because there's way more than people that are playing the game hours and hours a day. What I'm saying is, in every game, just like 2K, and I think 2K is a big one, there's a lot of people that don't even watch. So how are they gonna even see if there's a strike or anything like that? And plus, they don't care. They're just playing play now online with their friends, they're playing my GM, things like that. They're not worried about anything that we're going through because they're not going through it. But you get, you get people that are like, also, Bash Blog, you have all these complaints about the game and you hate the game. Why do you still upload it? That's not true. I don't hate the game. You guys know that. We've talked about that multiple times. I just hate the business. What's going on? The egregious major transactions, not even micro transactions anymore, massive transactions that 2K is adding into the game, trying to squeeze out every single penny from their customers. I think 2K24 is a serviceable game. I can play it. I can have fun on it. Not all the time. I definitely have to take a lot of breaks. I uh, haven't hit level 40 since like season three, but I probably hated 2K21, 2K22 if I was to rate it, you know, hate or great, good, whatever. But yeah, I think this is a serviceable game and that's pretty much it. The 2K is not trying to innovate or make a great product anymore. That's a big problem as well with my feelings towards 2K. You know what I'm saying? But also there's people like, you know, think about this. If I stopped uploading 2K, I want you to just give me your opinion on this. Versus showing 3 million people that you don't have to spend money on a build. And also my newest documentary, opening people's eyes, like people that are like, oh, I, I wasn't even aware of these issues that you're even talking about. Or maybe I was, but I didn't really think about what's going on. 
See what I'm saying? We've opened over 3 million people's eyes to a different perspective, or maybe just being like, oh wow, that's something that I definitely agree with, or I have similar feelings to that, you know what I'm saying? So what do you think? If I just quit, would I make a difference? As much as showing 3 million people that you don't have to spend money on VC? I don't know, you guys obviously know my opinion on that. But also, man, creators, like I said, they're not gonna go on a strike. Yeah, they are a part of the money coming in, but it's not nearly as much as you actually think if you break it down. I mean, everything is an issue outside of the game. We're not even talking about gameplay when I talk most about most of these issues for the last few months. I got on to spin my wheel today, you guys know. I practice what I preach. I spin that wheel a lot, even if I'm not playing the game. I got another watch. I went to count how many watches I have. And keep in mind, I haven't bought any. I have six watches what am i gonna do with six watches not just that not just six watches but i also got a whole bunch of attribute boosts when i have layup and dunk boost unlimited i've got layup and dunk boost a bunch of times off the wheel which doesn't do anything for me i've got indicators and green releases for teams i don't care about it's terrible they have actually watered down every Thing. And yes, there is some people that's ready to comment like, oh, badge plug, I won 250,000 BC off the wheel. It's possible, but it's a very, very low chance. And I feel like they almost do it just so some people can say, ah, oh, man, I, hey, look, you're complaining about that, but I, you know, hey, bro, I got something really nice off of it. You know what I'm saying? But look, we got to talk about this, bro. We have to talk about 2K adding. And this is one of the craziest things because nobody talks about this really. You guys remember, if you've been here, before 2K24 came out, literally the first impression I had of badge regression, I told you guys it's stupid. I said it would be very, very hard to implement this correctly. I think there's a very high chance. I'm almost, I'm almost saying word for word right here. I said I think there's a very, very high chance they make it a terrible decision. They mess it up versus they make it something that's like interesting and actually works good with the game. They literally added badge regression, right? Where you can lose your badges and then every single season are giving us floor setters for level 20 and level 40. Think about that. Think about how crazy that is. They can manipulate you psychologically that good that you're like, oh yeah, I gotta hit level 40 this season so I can keep my badge from regressing. Oh man, it still blows my mind that there was a lot of people telling me that I was in the wrong before the game came out about being very critical of losing badges. Seasons, pay to win, bro, like it's gonna happen. It's most likely going to happen. Now, like I told y'all, bro, waiting until the next game is free or waiting till it's on sale, playing play now online. There's so many things you can do if you still want to buy 2K because I understand, bro, I really get it. That this is the only basketball game. But like we've talked about before, beside the strike thing, which isn't realistic, a very much more realistic thing is for a lot of people to stop buying as much VC, to find a different avenue, to do some no money spent. Now you might be like, oh, this is a creator telling me to stop buying VC. I haven't bought VC since I told you guys. I literally have not bought VC in the year of 2024. Yes, I'm still going to buy VC in the future, like when 2K25 comes out, things like that. But I told you guys, I'm going to myself do what I said, spend less money on VC. And if a lot of people just spend less money, that's going to be big. There is, we've seen in their earnings from, uh, not their last earnings, but the one before, that they apparently make 75% almost of their money from microtransactions, guys. So yes, that is, I think, a much more realistic approach if you want 2K to feel it. If you want to hit their pockets so that they can maybe innovate more, maybe care more about their product, is to just spend less on microtransactions. Of course, the, the best way possible is to just not buy the game. But being realistic, a lot of people are gonna buy it, especially because it's the only basketball game out right now. I think that's a good way you could look at it. So, also, for 2K25, I've seen this tweet right here, and it blew my mind. It actually did. PlayStation, as you see, 97 million monthly active users and over half, right around half, of those users are still on PS4. 
That's crazy because I did not expect that. And what I'm saying that for is I would not be surprised if there is another prehistoric gen, last gen, whatever you want to call it for 2K25, which means, of course, and you can say, oh, well, Badge Plug, they have two different teams. The work's going to be split up. The money's not going to be the same. Like, they're, they need to focus on one product. I mean, it's very obvious that they need to have all their focus on one product, and it's not going to happen. But this time, I'm actually going to agree with 2K. Like, I get it. I mean, imagine, think about this. They make a, let's say they make a billion dollars in a year. If you're not getting an extra, let's say there's 20% of people that are still playing last gen. I think it's probably around like 30, but let's say 20. If they make a billion dollars, that's $200 million they would lose out on of, of revenue because they didn't make a last gen game. It's unfortunate that a lot of games are being held back because of last gen consoles. I don't want to like money shame people or whatever. Uh, people normally do with the whole ah, oh, you're broke get a last get a new gen console, whatever You know you do you do that if you want, but I'm just saying like it's actually Gonna be another year. It blows my mind when we came, when we got to this generation I was thinking when 2k21 came out We'll probably have two different games for like two years. I was pretty sure This year was gonna be the one where we didn't have a last gen, but nope we're here again, and I don't think it's going to stop. I think they're going to make last-gen games up until the next next-gen comes out, which is crazy. Actually crazy. Anyway, Ronnie2k went to Twitter, and he replied to someone. The reply doesn't matter, but this is what he said, okay? This is what he said right here. He said, miss it too. You'll soon see all the things I've been working on that have been keeping me off social media and live lately. Really exciting times ahead, but definitely miss it. So I don't know what Ronnie2k is talking about, with he's got something really exciting soon and stuff like that. But I'm interested to see because I might know, but I don't want to go out of my way to spoil that. Not necessarily spoil, but go out of my way because this is information that could get the person that told me in trouble. You know what I'm saying? But uh, if that's true, what I know, it could be something good. Not It's not going to be game changing or anything like that. But it could be something good for the community that would be good for the years ahead. Anyway... Someone sent me this from, from Reddit. You guys know I hate Reddit. I think it's the worst thing on this planet. It's just a cesspool of hate. You know what I'm saying? Besides the fact that Reddit is awesome for finding an issue. Like, it is literally a broken masterpiece, Reddit. Because in one hand, it's just a whole bunch of dweebs that are just sitting there, hate, hate, hate. That's all they do. They wake up with hate in their heart. And on the other hand, if I have an issue with something eight years, the most specific issue you could ever think of, I could probably find out how to fix it on Reddit. Somewhere in the archive. Anyway, look at this right here. This guy was talking about me, talking about rewards that 2K should do for the game and stuff like that. He said, this tweet shown here is from Badge Plug. I don't know how many of y'all actually have watched Badge Plug's videos, but all of his suggestions basically center around the comp scene. <laughs> Dribble heads, making tough shots, etc. And those are all suggestions that go against what casuals, majority of the players, player base, believe it or not, which I agree with, want from the game. Occasionally, Badge Plug says something you and I can agree with, but at the end of the day, he's really no different from the same creators, which complain about not being able to spam dribble and shoot contested until the game is patched to allow them to do that. So, first of all, that is actually, like, if you guys, that has to be satire. I, he was actually serious, but... It's almost like if you were to watch my channel and maybe he's seen a few different videos that didn't uh, go with what I usually preach. But it's like if you watch my channel and said the exact opposite <laughs> of what I stand for. First of all, y'all know that I've been here for a long time. I hated the 2K22 left, right, set shot 25, stun you play style. The dribble, 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 stun you. I thought that took no skill. I thought it was stupid, all that type of stuff. Then, if any of you guys have ever watched one of my jump shot videos, and especially my videos, or just watch these gameplays normally, okay, sometimes it's a little different, especially in the videos where I tell you, like, you know, I'm giving tips on how to shoot better and stuff like that, I always, always preach taking wide open shots. And not only that, more than ever, 2K23 and 2K24, I've preached that because... When you take a wide open shot versus an open shot, now you don't have open looks anymore. 
That's a big deal, in my opinion. I think that's a really big deal. And not just that, it's probably going to change your shot timing a lot more often, okay? Not every single time, but it's much more likely to change your shot timing, your cue, your arc, all that type of stuff because Mike Wing is stupid and thought that was gonna, I'm sorry, Mike Wing. I, I didn't mean to say it like that, okay? But like, that was dumb thinking that was gonna fix Zins, okay? And that was really dumb, bro, because now we have Titans. It's even worse, it's even worse. But yeah, I, dude, I've literally practiced, I mean preached, taking wide open shots versus even open for years now, which is crazy. Maybe he's seen me shooting crazy with my 99 three-point Steph Curry build or something like that. I don't know. But uh, basically center around the comp scene, dribble heads, making tough shots, spam dribble and shoot contested until the game is patched to allow them to do it. What? That is actually hilarious, bro. I, I don't even know. I just wanted to show you guys that that have been here for a long time because you're probably laughing with me because you've seen the videos. You've seen them. Anyway, current gen, prehistoric gen, whatever it is, you have a legend reward that makes you like Superman or something like that. I want to show you guys that. that. I thought that was crazy. It's the same legend grind as last year from 2K23, put on to 2K24. But yeah, you get like this throne, this like king's throne and you can fly around like Superman, which still is cosmetic, and I would say sucks if it was on 2K24 next gen, but it's just crazy how that's probably better than the Legend Reward this year, the top 10 reward or whatever you want to call it, because one, you can't lose it. You can hit Legend this year, the, the quote-unquote Legend is top 10, and you can literally lose it. Only 10 people can have it. It's really dumb, really dumb. Speaking of rewards, by the way, Chris ZT, who I think was someone who used to be pretty in good with 2K. So I was glad to see this. I was glad to see people, I, and I could be wrong here, but I'm so glad to see creators speaking up. He said 2K and EA are having a who is more out of touch with their consumers competition. Scrap the entire reward system once and for all. And he was replying, of course, to the season seven news that came out for these terrible rewards. Once again, they gave us. I mean, that's no surprise at all. But yeah, I just, I love it, man. I love that. I think some people are starting to be less scared of biting their tongue but for some reason it's a lot of big creators like i'm talking about like over 100k you know you got brutal sim all city things like that that speak out but there's a lot of creators that are still scared for that stupid community day and that stupid logo that doesn't do anything for them it's crazy to me it's crazy anyway as you guys see right here and i don't know if this is real take it with a grain of salt this is not a troll post but it looks like 2k is banning people that are using unauthorized software he's and it says the account has been permanently banned for using unauthorized software third party stuff so i don't know if that's real but first of all it's way too late in the year for you to finally start enforcing this 2k people that are using zens titans whatever you want to call it but uh yeah, hopefully in 2K25, hopefully that's real, they actually ban people that are cheating. Now, under Joe Knows new No Money Spent video, which he just recently did, this comment was awesome. I had to show you guys. This video should be used as evidence on a 2K trial. It takes Joe Knows 60 hours to reach 85 overall. And we're talking about someone who knows this game almost perfectly. Plays twos with another good player grinding, threes with a maxed out player, and fives with high level five stack. Also, Joe's build is optimized. His upgrades are optimized. Which stat to upgrade first for gameplay to unlock animations and badges properly? And he's a very good player on top of that. There's no way this goes as smoothly for a kid discovering the game. Kid who is target 2K. And this kid will lose so much time in the process, especially on a poorly optimized build, probably. Anyway, don't get me wrong, it's a great video, but what a testimony on 2K's predatory system. It took Joe Knows 60 hours to hit 85 overall. And we talked about this in my Kobe video, which you guys definitely should go check out, by the way, that I guess it took me in total, I think it was 118 hours, 120 to hit 99 overall. I, I guess that it would take a casual player who doesn't have teammates. That's a big one, right? Doesn't have consistent teammates and also isn't as good, which is okay. About 200 hours to go from 60 to 99 overall. <laughs> Without playing my career, of course, that would make it a little bit faster. But, I mean, you might not be alive by the time you hit 99 because uh, it's that boring for a lot of people. There is some people that enjoy it, but I'm saying a lot of people do not. 
but is that not mind blowing to you? Think about this. If you are a quote unquote casual player, which I said is completely fine to be a casual if you didn't hear a minute ago, and you had two hours a day to play, two hours a day, 200 hours to hit 99 would be a hundred days of grinding out your build. A hundred days. Now check this out. This guy is from my recent video, which you guys need to go check out. The downfall of 2K. It took a lot of time. It even took $2,500. Like, it was crazy, bro, how much we put into this video. I'm not going to be posting project after project that's like this. I still want to post these kind of videos right here where we just talk to each other and share news and stuff like that. But I am definitely going to be posting probably a few videos like that a year because I really enjoy... Just putting a lot of time into something and making an incredible video. I think it's a really cool thing that we've been able to achieve on the Kobe video and the downfall of 2K. But anyway, this guy said, I work full time and have two kids and a wife. I haven't played 2K for a few years, but got the new one since it's free on PlayStation. I've just been doing my career or whatever it's called. About 56 games in and I'm 72 overall. I haven't even bothered playing online because everyone is 90 plus. That right there is a window into a casual's perspective. 52 games and he's a 70 overall like it's actually insanely bad i don't know how many kids 2k can possibly because a lot of people think that 2k is just targeting kids um with you know but if you think about it i don't know how many you could actually bring like how many new players not even just kids but let's just think about kids right here can you really bring it to like the park in my team modes think about my career if I asked my mom for $100 for one build when I was 15, I'd probably have two red marks on my face, both sides. Slapping the, are you serious? Did you just ask me for $100 after I just bought you this $70 game? Come on now, let's be real. How many kids can you possibly possibly bring in? So at, this, at one point they're like losing people or people that aren't playing as much throughout the year anymore. And on another hand, how are they really bringing that many new people in with how insane the entry fee is to play the game? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I just don't think that this is going to be a recipe for success for a long time. And I think that we would have seen two red earnings in a row if they didn't make the game free on both consoles for a month and do all that shenanigans they did for my team, uh, which was insane it still blows my mind especially with the kobe card collection if you guys didn't see that where they switched it out last day the best card that you uh can get for collecting thousands of cards and playing for hundreds of hours or it was supposed to be a very good card and then on the last day before people could get it they switched it which is insane but anyway ronnie 2k mocap 2k25 you guys know this cycle is about to start soon I'm going to be making news videos like I always do informing you guys on what's going on because believe it or not there's going to be a lot of people that are going to buy 2k25 like I said you can wait till it's free that's a good option you can wait till it's on sale that's a good option there's a lot of things you can do uh but as I always say buy the and you know I, I don't always say buy 2k25 because we haven't got there but buy the game at your own risk I'm giving you news I'm giving you information take that and assemble it in your brain and do not take it as, oh, Badge Plug's hyping up the game or he's saying this is going to be the best 2K ever. No. No. Buy the game because you decide you want to buy it. Or maybe buy it because another creator is a shill and sold his soul to 2K and just does everything he possibly can. But I'm not going to do that. Okay? I'm going to give you the information. You do what you want with it. All right? But check this out right here, man. This is... Uh, Pretty interesting from Joe Knows where he posted because Frank, who works at the 2K League, posted the last dance. He said, is the 2K League done? Sorry, I got a little cough. Is the 2K League done? A lot of people have been spreading rumors that the 2K League is done. Like, this is the last year. And uh, I see it happening. I mean, I, as we all know, the 2K League, I don't think many people are gonna i would say there's a very high percent of people that don't can agree with me that the 2k league has not been successful and there's been many many issues in that you can't just blame it and point it on one thing but that's crazy that we might not have the 2k league anymore like it might actually be gone and i really think like we talked about before i honestly think that 2k made the the 2k league or take two they made the 2k league just so they could put it and they have put it on their earnings before 
that they have a professional league. They've said on their earnings, we're the only sports game with a professional league. Yeah, but you didn't care about it at all. I mean, I worked with the 2K League, as you guys know, in 2K22. I played uh, as a lockdown on stage in a tournament for $10,000 against a guy who became a 2K League pro the next year. Uh, and I, we won, which was awesome. I had to guard the cheese, you know, the 2K22 left, right cheese, and we won. I've experienced inside and out what the 2K League is. Never worked with 2K, okay, never been paid by 2K, but was with the 2K League. And I'm just going to tell you right now that there's a lot of people, although they will say, oh, like the money's 50-50, like some of it's from 2K, some of it's from, from the league. 2K does has not helped the league at all from what I've been told. At all. And I could be wrong here. I'm just saying as I've been told. But yeah, I don't know who necessarily to put all the blame on. Like I said, I think there's a bunch of things. I think the 2K League is, is washed. I think it's gone. I don't think it, it worked. I don't think it ever worked. And uh, that's pretty upsetting to see that we can't even get a professional league to work. Because look at all these other games where the professional league works. And it works great. I mean, it's huge for the game. Look Like Call of Duty, Halo, uh, what is it? Counter-Strike Go. There's so much games, Dota, that like that's the main part of their game. That's the biggest part of their game. Or very close. And yet, we're going to be losing ours. The 2K community is going to be losing our professional league. But let's talk about gameplay for a minute. Now, this is from Dazar, a 2K developer who followed me. And we had a lot of good conversations over the little amount of time that we have talked over the past few years. But recently, he unfollowed me, which is... Well, it's whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's whatever. Uh, this is what he said about gameplay. And this is something that people really need to understand. You might have seen this before. He said this right here. He said, as it's going to pop up, part of the difficulty is more realistic movement equals less user control. Part of the difficulty is more realistic movement is less user control. I'm going to say that again. When we make it more realistic, users complain that the game feels stiff because you have to wait for foot plant or ball position to change directions. In a video game, control is king, which conflicts realism. Okay. Now, you guys not, might not be already to my point here. But we've talked about this a few times, my opinion on uh, on realism on the game. I think that there has to be a balance. We can't have a 10 out of 10 realistic 2K. There's some people that are die hard. Like, as soon as you say something, before you even get the point out, they're like, no, it has to be realistic. And you guys just want to cheese. And you just want to... No, not at all. But the game from a developer that's worked at 2K for a long time just told you, that the more realistic we go, there's issues with that. I think that 2K should make a 6 out of 10 points, right? We have 10 points to give to arcade, arcadey gameplay, and also realistic. 2K should put about 6 to 7 into realistic and about 3 to 4 into arcadey. I think this year we're like 8 on the, realistic, the realism. And it literally counter, it is counterintuitive. It actually makes it less realistic sometimes in some areas than actually realistic. Like they try to make uh, something realistic and it actually makes it really unrealistic. That's the only way I can explain it. Uh, it's really unfortunate that we're at this point where I don't know, man. I don't know what's going on. I really don't know. And I've told you guys that I'm going to try to fight through it. I've been making a lot of lot better content in my opinion like the kobe video the documentary the video essay stuff like that and i've been enjoying that but if i stop like enjoying what i'm doing i'm not gonna be here i've told you guys before that i enjoy what i'm doing still from time to time not all the time okay you know it is a job at the end of the day but i really hope that we can see the comeback of 2k make 2k great again i posted that on twitter before but what i really mean though is like call of duty was a game I played for a very long time, and at one point I played more shooter games than 2K, like in basketball. Like I played Halo, Gears of War, Call of Duty, Battlefield, lots of shooter games, but mainly my big one was Call of Duty. I played since Call of Duty 4, 
And my favorite Call of Duty, by the way, if you're wondering, if you made it this far, comment down below, yap plug, because I told y'all, we are going to be yapping, okay? We are yapping today. My favorite Call of Duty, it's probably nostalgia-based, really, but it's Call of Duty World at War, or aka Call of Duty 5, the fifth one. That game was awesome. I played for years, hit 10th Prestige every year, for a long time, year after year, loved the game. And then Call of Duty started dropping stinkers. There, I think it started with Ghost. It was Ghost where I was just like, oh man, I don't like this game. I really don't. Maybe you guys did like Ghost. There's actually a very weird opinion on Ghost. Like it's literally both ways. It's I hated the game or I loved the game. There's not really in the middle. And then they had, what was it? Infinite Warfare, Advanced Warfare. And I just didn't like the games. But my point is, the community's opinion on Call of Duty for years was the game they're making trash. Like it turned into a 2K, you know what I'm saying? They were just making trash, trash, trash. And of course this is, I'm going over sentiment, like the overall of, uh, opinion, uh, the majority's opinion of the game. And then this year, I was watching FaZe Jeb, if you guys know who that is, and he was saying that the game was good. He said that a lot of people were enjoying the game. It's so good, he was saying that everyone's going back to the argument of aim assist on mouse and keyboard versus controller. He was saying that the reason that that's the only big argument right now is because most people are enjoying the game. So what I'm trying to say is, I really hope that we can see something like Call of Duty. I mean, this was a AAA game, millions and millions of copies sold every year, just like 2K that was making trash, trash, trash. And now apparently there's a good amount of people that are enjoying the game this year. I, I really, really have faith that in some point, and it might be years from now, because I don't know, I don't know what's going on, but at some point the sentiment will come back and people will be like, okay, 2K's back. Yeah, 2K's good this year. Yeah, it's got its issues, but it's good this year. And like I told you guys, I don't even hate 2K24. I can have fun playing the game. A big reason though that I can have fun is because I have so many builds. Like I have a lot of different play styles I can play on and I think that if, you know, like the, the average person doesn't have money to spend like that and also time to upgrade the builds to even enjoy them. So, man, I just gotta give you guys my perspective, but also like there's another big expect, uh, perspective, like I told y'all, man, where there's a bunch of people that can't do that. There's a bunch of people that cannot put in that time or the money to be able to even get that perspective. So I don't know, man. Click this video if you want to see my last one. That was the documentary video essay that I spent so much time and money on. Click it, tap it. It'll take you to that. I think it's a beautiful masterpiece. And I'm out of here. Bro, you might as well because I'm literally leaving. Just go, go check it out. Just go check it out. Why, why are you still listening? And I'm out of here. Peace.